we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Just God, may you bring about your promise that you help this dawn. Father, how good you are, help us to realize and to know. If you love me, then I will rescue you from your problems. If you know me, then I will unlimitedly raise you up. Psalms 91 verse 14, may we receive this blessing. Surely at this dawn, we believe we will receive help. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. So you say sheep, but if your actions don't follow, let's find Jude chapter 1 verse 15. You become someone like this, a liar. You say, Lord, but if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, it's all lies. So if you lie, you'll go to hell. So how can you receive answers? If you've said, Lord, then you have to be someone who has received the Holy Spirit. Many people say, Lord, but they, but they say it without having received the Holy Spirit. So they all lie. So you... You know, the whole day, we're just filled with lies. Where does it say that? Where does it say, if you say law without the Holy Spirit, it's all lies? 1 Corinthians. Yes, it's there too. Well, it's in many places. Romans chapter 1. So because you have demons, because you're lying, but you're deceived by your the demons inside of yourself. You deceive your own self and then you pretend that you're believing. That is what is detestable. So why is it I can't say Amen? Because you're so tied up to your thoughts, because you're filled with demons, because you hear, if you don't say Amen, you'll go to hell, that you can't receive blessings. That's what God has decided upon, not what I say. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. You're like, well, they don't say it in other places. Well, does that mean you're going to follow where all those other people are going to hell? How many people are going to hell? Like in the time of Noah, Matthew chapter 24. So why, why, why focus on that? Let's not follow the many who died in the time of Noah, but the eight who lived. That's where we should put our focus. But until you change your actions, your, all your consciences have not been revived. So that last conscience, the kind conscience, if you don't revive that, then your faith, it's all shipwrecked. It's all collapsed. But then you, you're deceived by yourself and, and pretending that you do have faith. So all this time, why is it that this hasn't been taught? So why follow those demons? You know, you can't make those excuses in front of God. And that's where Romans chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. In all of nature, it's talking to you. So why follow these scholars, these fake pastors, and then and then make excuses? Romans chapter 1, it says that you cannot make any excuse. So we have to live. We have to do more well. We have to pass blessings to our children. And so we have to make it so that there's no place for demons to stick inside of them. I have to do my duty. I have to obey the word. That's when my children become obedient and there's sibling affection. You know, if they have demons and they're, and they're complete enemies and then, and then the parents force them together, you know, you, you may get married. The, the celebrant may say, well, there's no settlement that says you're now not two but one. Matthew chapter 19, verse 45. And even if they say it, they don't give a solution of how. It's only by forced out repentance. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. So all these all these celebrants, they're all liars. They say things that don't work. So let's read. To execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds, which they have done in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Amen. 
So it's saying how important it is. Um, your heart, according to your, your the glasses you're wearing, that's how you see. But according to your heart, that's how you see. So that's Matthew chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. But the problem is our conscience. It's we don't have a conscience. You know, in the future, when you sin, what comes back? In Korea, who is it that keeps planting these disasters that are going to come upon Korea? It's you and I. We keep making these grenades, these disasters. Proverbs chapter thirteen, verse twenty-one. We keep making these disasters, so we have to quickly get rid of this. You know, in the world, they're saying let's get rid of these landmines that are buried under the earth. But rather than that, we have to get rid of the the. The bombs inside of our hearts—that's the way the world can live. But what is my heart? So, if you, what does it say in verse sixteen? Have we read sixteen? We've only read fifteen. Okay, let's read verse sixteen. These are grumblers, finding fault, following after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. Amen. So what does it say here? Let's read it again. These are grumblers finding fault, following after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. Amen. So it's these people. These are people who these things come out in their lives. Who who are these people? You and I. It comes out of us the whole day. So nothing's going to work if we don't wash this. So if you have these things, then you don't have faith. These people without faith. So what's so their 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 kind conscience is dead. It's gone, and so their faith has collapsed, and that's why their actions don't change. It's these people. Let's find Titus chapter one verse sixteen. So these people—they're always babbling with their mouths. Well, pastor, then we don't need to do this then. So these people, who anyone can see that they could never do well, these people who are stubborn, who don't listen, Jesus's disciples. So you know these these boat people. So you know they they just they just live in whichever way because they don't know if you're going to die because of this wave or that wave. You know you talk about how expensive fish fish are, but those people p- give up their lives. If you can see a wave that's that's got white a white crest, that's that's nothing. You know, you, a real wave. Suddenly, all of a sudden, you don't see anything, and suddenly the wave just capsizes, that just drowns a boat. So they put up they put up their lives when they do this, and that's why they live day by day. If you're living day by day, two Timothy chapter five verse six. If you're living for the pleasures of each day. That's someone who is dead. So these people who say that they're a little bit learned, they're saying, "Oh, let's just live for today's joy." Well, then you're dead. Other than the the pleasure that God gives, God gives this pleasure as a gift. Ecclesiastes. So otherwise, you're all you're all dead. So that's、um, so. If you're just living day by day, you're dead. Two Timothy chapter five verse six, Ecclesiastes chapter three verse twelve. So let's read together. They profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him, being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. Amen. So, whatever good deed to receive blessings, they won't do that. So there's two types of people: either evil or righteous. But after being corrupted. We're all evil. That's Romans chapter five, verse twelve. We're all evil. So my ancestors are evil. I'm evil. My descendants are evil. So 
So the evil, all they plant is disasters. And so in the 21st century, it's going to become a dirty, a uh, filthier world. And then what happens? You can't live your life properly. You know, you see these people who are trying to protect the environment. They're saying the it's the environment that's going to kill us. Who's done that? We have. So it's the environment that will kill us more and more. But it's not just the environment. Your children will kill you. You know, before, before this university professor, you know, the son killed him, but more and more this is going to become a frequent thing because the parent, the children won't know their parents. So if you do bad things, then it's your children that will fall into that. You and your children will fall into that. That's why in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 27, yet we do this. Why? Because we don't know. We've never heard. You have to know, you have to hear to have faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes from hearing. Well, what is it that you hear? What is it that you hear? The word of Christ. The word of four step repentance. The word of the mystery of Christ. You have to hear that in order to have faith. But people. They t- they take that away. They just say, oh, you, you get faith from hearing. But they take away the word of Christ. And so they make all these fakes. And then they pretend they don't know. God. So were we deceived by that? Where does it say that God will just let it pass just because you were deceived? He says, He will make it so that you know. So today, let's wake up. If we go inside of Christ, our eyes are opened and our ears are opened. So then you can't hear fake sermons. If you know this is rat poison, who's going to eat it? There's no one who's going to eat it knowing. You only eat it because you don't know and then you die. But if you know, you are not going to eat it. And so he says, you have to know me. That's when I'll honor you. So what is it to know him? Well, we have to love him. That's when he rescues us from our problems, and that's when we'll know him. But we're not able to know him. Why? 1 John 3, verse 6, it's because of sin. It's because of sin that we don't know him, and we can't meet him. God has prepared all blessings. Why can't we take them? We're not able to get where the blessings are. Why? Because the sins are blocking. Let's say there's a precious ring, but you've dropped it and you can't find it. Well, you can't find it because you can't see it. If you can see it, then you can find it. But why can't we see it? It's because of sin. So the blessings are right in front of us. Your parents, you know, which parents hide your food? They make it easy for you to find. If you're a man, you can see it straight away. But because of sin... You know, you, you you keep going somewhere else and so you can't see it. And then you say you're not doing well. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. So we've come this dawn to receive these blessings. God says he will help. The exodus for 40 years, what is that? So he's put the blessings here. If you go straight within 10, you know, 10 days, a fortnight, you you'll receive those blessings. But because of disobedience, for 40 years they wandered around. That is the Exodus. So God says, you remember the Exodus. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. Why? Why is it I can't receive blessings? Because you are crooked. The blessings are in front of you, but you're wandering around. So each of us can do well unlimitedly. You know, I can say to you confidently in front of God, I can witness the word. Have a look at Pastor Park's life. You know, I'm filled with sin, but I do I I do the washing without ceasing, just like just like you breathe through your nose. Because he gave us life through the nose, the Holy Spirit. And that's why even when you're lying down and you're sleeping, you have to repent. You meditate without ceasing. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. And that's why I'm cleaner more than anyone else. And that's why God pours out the blessings. You're able to see the blessings that he's put there. And so you receive a lot of blessings unlimitedly. If you do four-step repentance, God, he will 
he will raise you up. There's someone who received a doctorate from writing the four state repentance. That is an atomic bomb that's going to wake up the world. You know, the most scary, filthy bomb, it's Japan that tasted of it, no other country. And after Japan tasted of it, the whole, the whole world is, is quivering. So tasting good things, is that a blessed man or tasting bad things? You know. So how pitiful is Japan? So they, they're they saying Japan keeps sinking. So let's read Psalms chapter 46, verse 1, 2, and 3. So what we found, you know, if we read it, it's something we know anyway. So Psalms chapter 46, verse 1, 2, and 3. So the way for Japan to live too, the way for us to live too, all of the world, they're saying the weather's become strange. If one person smokes in a small room, what happens to the air? It becomes, you know, hazy. Well, if 10 people are smoking in that room, then, you know, it becomes so bad. How much has, has man made pollution? You know, the, the scientists are saying there's all this extreme weather and that's how, you know, all the scientists are saying that's how, you know, humans are going to die. This year, they're saying these floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, all these things that are unimaginable. And now there's bushfires where people have to, they have to, you know, take refuge somewhere else. So if you and I live by this mystery of Christ, then he will block the disasters for us and our children. That's why we're at this dawn, to receive this. So let's read verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. So when you have a problem, the one to meet is God. The way to find refuge is God. The one who gives us strength is God. This is what he has promised. Just even just with this, this is incredible. So if you're in a refuge, why would you get hurt? Why would you have problems? If you have strength, why wouldn't you be able to escape? If God is with me, there's nothing that won't work out. So I'll read it. God, where is God? He is inside of four-step repentance. So all this time, your life of faith that you've lived, it's, it's been a mess. You know, where is God? He's inside of four-step repentance. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Even though I've preached this sermon so much, you still don't know. So because you don't think about meeting God, all you get are problems. But you're, you're, not, you're not getting blessings. You're, you and your children, you're not changing. You still don't know where God is. God is inside of four-step repentance. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. So God is inside of Christ. And that's why it's a mystery. So God is our refuge. So you and I, He is our refuge. And He is our strength. And in the time of trouble, the only one that we can receive help from is Him. So if you have a problem, whatever problem, if you try to solve it with human science, you'll be ruined. It seems like you're doing well, but you'll be more ruined. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. So you need to meet God to receive solutions. So if the earth changes, what happens? It becomes desert. You know, if the earth changes, it's pollution. Though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. So what is that? This is, this is, the, this is the earth changing where where there's an earthquake and things fall into the sea, no one can block nature. These earthquakes, you know, if Japan listens to this, they will live, verse 2. And so that country disappearing, the people disappearing, because Japan's afraid of this, they're, they're buying all this land in Brazil and overseas, so that if Japan disappears, they're going to move over there. But instead of doing that, Psalms chapter 46, verse 1 to 2. If you know these two verses, the mountains may disappear, the earth may change, even though these, these huge extreme disasters may happen. 
if you depend in God, because it's God who does it, He will take care of it. Even though you're taught in this tape, you won't do it. Why is it? In travels, you know something happens. It's because the earth is changing and the mountains、um, are slipping into the sea. That's these are these are earthquakes. And but if we if we depend on God, He takes care of it. And though its waters roar and foam, if if nature moves, human strength cannot block it. It's only by God. You know, someone sought out our church、um, in Kamchonman. So he built the boat, and it had been dropped down into the shipyard, and it was time to to hand it over to the owner. But then this typhoon hit; all the other boats sunk because of the the tsunami, because of the boats crashing into each other. You know, this is how strong the waves were. the The poles that were inside of the Sea had all uplifted. You know, God just playing around a little bit, and all these metal、uh, poles they all they all come up, and so these boats they're crashing into each other and sinking. But this person sought out me and my wife, and he said, "Oh, pastor, you know, he needed to hand over this this ship that he built, you know, in order to receive money." But even before he handed it over, it's the ship's about to sink. So, you know, he because he was thinking about the money. That's why he came to me and my wife. But when we went there, these boats, even though people are on them, they can't be driven, and they they crash into the rocks and they sink. They crash into this and that. They crash into each other and they sink. But this person who had asked for us to pray for him, his boat was. Was bobbing up and down too. So all these other boats, they're sinking, and so we'd be like, "Father, oh no, that bo- the boat's getting too close to there," and then it would move. We'd say, "Oh, it's about to crash into this boat," and it would move. And out of all of that, in in that Kamchaman area, the only boat that was left was this man's. So God is so good. God is so amazing. The waves. You think they listen to me? No, but because we requested to the Father, I don't know if He received a satellite message or from a transceiver. But, but, but this boat would just be floating along in the middle. If our prayers were lacking, it would start to get closer to to being crashed. But Who is it that did this? God. So when there's a flood, during the flood of Noah, everyone died. So if there's a flood, everyone dies. If the earth disappears, we all died. This is an incredible word here. These are things beyond human, what human powers are. But God says, "I do it." Do you believe this? Though its waters roar and foam. Though the mountains quake at its swelling pride, therefore we will not fear. What does it say? Faith. Does it fear or not? It's saying, "I will keep my faith." So, what is faith? Who comes when we have faith? It starts with Christ, and God comes. That is faith. So it's God who does everything. So what is it you and I have to do? All we have to do is believe. That's what the Father is telling us. So now the world, the disasters are getting so extreme. All the countries are now worrying all over the world. So because of man's sins, the environment is now changing into a bomb. But to to be protected and to do more well, it's only God who can do it. Even though our country is wrong, a child that keeps calling out "mom, mom," even though it's someone else's child, what happens? Maybe you get a bottle of milk. 
no matter how evil someone is. If someone keeps screaming out, Mom, Mom, for one month, yes, they may have their cheeks slapped and be dragged off to prison, but still, if they keep doing it, they'll be given a bottle of milk. You know, even though we have fakes in our country, we still have a million people. Yes, they may not find the right, they may not be finding the right way. But still, if you're calling out, mom, mom, then the father, you know, may say, oh, I'm never going to look at you. But even if it's through, you know, whoever it is, through someone who says, come out of the gutter. That's the mystery of Christ. That's why our country will live. We will do well. Let's surely receive help. So no one can block what the wor- world, the, how the world moves, but the Father can. And Psalm chapter 46, verse 5, it says, I will help. So now, now it's going to taste different now that we know this. So before we only heard that God helps at dawn. But verse one, from, from verse 1, this help that he promises is incredible. And verse 5, it says, I will help you at dawn. Let's read. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Amen. So, in front, he's promised something incredible. And then he says he'll help us at dawn. So, we need to say amen quietly because the worldly people, they're going to hear us clapping when they hear that he helps at dawn. They're they're going to be coming and sitting at the back. We will do well. So God says he will help us inside of nature. So that means he will help us. So as you always read verse 1 and 3, who helps? It's only God. Verse 2 and 3, no matter what difficulty, he will help us at dawn. May this be your blessing. Let's all pray. Father, this is such a precious promise. This world, because of natural disasters. They're saying that we're living in times where there's strange weather. But Father, you've already recorded this and you've given us a key that you help us at dawn. May we receive this. May we receive prosperity and may we give profit to others. May we all become saints, Pusan First Church, as, and may we be servants of power as salt and light. You've told us to receive these blessings. That's why you've given us sickness. That's why you've given us torment from our children. You've given us these problems in society for us to receive solutions and to receive an incredible power. We thank you so much for this. And may we, may we, may we um, make all the nations know that God is living. That's why we thank you for giving us these problems. Exodus chapter 14. May we not depart from this help. May we not betray. May we walk with God and receive solutions for all our problems. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen.